Magruder Trail is a legendary overlanding track located in southern Oregon. Straddling the California border, Magruder runs roughly 26 miles through what, for centuries, was lush forest. In 2001, a devastating forest fire ripped through the region, leaving it a shadow of its former self. Legend has it that the trail that we now know as Magruder, which was originally cut by Native Americans, was discovered in 1852 by two sailors from the shipwrecked schooner Paragon. The first iteration of the McGrew Trail was said to be a wicked test of endurance. For 20 miles, the hastily blazed trail rode 2,000 feet above the heavily wooded valleys and streams on either side of the mountain, which were later decimated by fire. By 1870, 18 years of heavy use left the McGrew Trail in poor repair. Alternative routes along more forgiving terrain had been discovered and developed. The McGrew Trail was effectively abandoned by the end of the 1800s. A century later, McGrew had been rediscovered and became a popular destination for off-roaders and overlanders. Since 2015, however, McGrew has been gated and only opened by permit. The Forest Service will only accept applications for a few months as well, during the year prior to the permit period. That means we've been planning this trip for more than seven months, and we're extremely grateful to be here, exploring this still gorgeous part of Southern Oregon. All right, we're finally on the McGrew Trail. Drove down from Portland last night. Some of our regulars, Josh and Devin, well, they're not with us today, but instead we've got some other friends along for the ride. We got Rowan and his friend Gus in the long wheelbase Range Rover Classic. Do you think we'll see bears? Don't think we'll see bears. There are no berries. Where there are no berries, there are no bears. Fair. Berries means bears. <laughs> We've got Zane in his D1. His family has owned that since new, which is cool. We can talk more about that later. And then we have Robert in the first gen Montero. And uh, taking up the uh, the back of the pack is our friend Eric in a stock XJ. And we'll get shots of that later, but that thing is sitting low. Even with uh, you know new leaf springs in the rear, that thing is, is tucking. So I think he'll be taking the easy path on a lot of this. The guys who'd driven McGrew before told us that it would be tough. A lot of them left with panel damage. We didn't realize, though, that we'd be hitting obstacles literally right through the gate. What line do we think here, guys? Is this, is this even doable in this truck? Slider. Not wanting to mess around, I engaged the front and rear lockers. Then I right foot braked up the rock, treating the brake pedal like a clutch. This keeps the revs right where I want them, allowing me to modulate torque delivery. I can't see what's up there. Am I clear now? Yeah, you're clear. The dog's out of the way. Then it was Robert's turn in his 1990 Mitsubishi Montero. He makes it look easy. Zane likes to keep his 1994 Discovery's T case in high range rather than low, even while wheeling. <laughs> Don't ask me why. With lockers engaged, I walk through the obstacles. The open axle rigs, though, they have to employ more throttle to make up for their lack of traction. <laughs> Eric's XJ is too low to climb this obstacle by itself, so Rowan was nice enough to tow him through. Look at that thing teeter! Come on, Eric, you got this! The first several obstacles are done and dusted, and we're moving along at a slow, and I mean slow, but steady pace. You know, it's a, it's a bit rockier than anticipated. <laughs> I'm sure I'm glad that I uh, placed the suspension last night, because otherwise we'd... Uh, 
would have lost something. Yeah, and I, I hope that I hope it doesn't get much hairier than what we've seen so far. I didn't know this trail was gonna be so tough. I've been tracking the trail. Let's see how how far we've we've done two miles. It's been five hours and 22 minutes. Uh, current speed, uh, oh, almost four miles an hour. Uh, our average speed is uh, 0.352 miles an hour. Uh, moving average is uh, 3.8. And top speed, blistering top speed, 10.7. Uh, so uh, the trail isn't that hard for the Gladiator. It's every other vehicle. Not to knock them, of course, but it just makes getting them through obstacles that much harder because especially with Eric, the low slung uh, JX, or XJ rather, that he got for $400 on trade. He did some welding for a guy. Uh, we, we have to drag him through pretty much anything that's, you know, more than a Civic could handle. Again, not knocking that Jeep, love those very much. And, and I love Eric's attitude and come out here and doing it. but. It's a, it's a little tough. It's a little harder track than I thought. Just seconds after declaring the trail harder than I thought it would be, we hit the bowl, the next big obstacle. You can't quite tell from this angle, but if I were to guess, I'd say it used to be a pond, maybe about 20 feet deep, which is plenty enough to get stuck into. There's a bypass around it, but Robert and I decide to take it on. As the first truck in, I decide to take it slow. I was definitely glad to have the anti-sway bar disconnected in the front so the suspension could flex. I know you hear it in every overlanding show, but the camera just doesn't do this one justice. Pretty, pretty decent obstacle up here. Just watch Nick effortlessly roll through. I'm pretty sure he was sipping a cup of coffee while he did it. Um, this might, might have to change my shorts after this. We'll see how things go. Having watched me, Robert decided to employ a different strategy and absolutely tossed his Montero into the bowl. But he comes through unscathed. Well, mostly. Oh! clear of the bowl, we're back on open ground and moving. I don't want to say we're making good time though, <laughs> because that would be a lie. All right, we are now three miles in. We are coming up on seven hours into the track of a 24 mile track. Zane has informed me that his uh, disco is getting hot and it starts overheating when he stops. So when we stop, he turns off the engine, uh, like most of us do. So, well, not me, I've been idling with the AC on. Uh, but the rest of the, the convoy turns their engines off and we stop. And he's been opening the hood to get the heat off of it. So I wanted him to bring his Ural, his two-wheel drive uh, Russian motorcycle with the sidecar, but instead he insists on bringing a vehicle that uh, he's not driven in 14 months. So that's fun. Seriously, I can't stress this enough. I wasn't sure Zane was actually going to join us on this trip. I mean, he never actually RSVP'd. He just showed up. Always one for adventure, Zane fired up the D1 for the first time in more than 18 months and drove straight down to the McGrew from Portland overnight, landing at the staging area at 6 a.m. The guy is a machine, and let's be honest, so is the D1. What we thought was uh, going to be easy sailing for a while turned back into heavy rocks. Hey, it's a McGrew trail. What to expect? Zane blew out a bushing on a uh, shock absorber with their 20-year-old shock, so that 
that's fine. It's just going to be extra noisy now. There is no section of this track that isn't kind of difficult. Like for one way or another, you either cross axle or you're, you know, rock garden or climbing logs or scraping through bushes. Who, I don't know who's done this in one day. We're now at nine hours, then 12 miles. It's a 24 mile track. The guy's like, oh, you can do it in six hours. In what, a dirt bike without stopping? We struggled on a bit longer. Eventually, and mercifully, we hit what we determined was the halfway point and set up camp. Instead of relaxing though, Eric had to jack up his XJ and do some repairs. The clapped out Cherokee had bounced off enough rocks that it knocked four gallons worth of capacity out of its fuel tank. So if you look right here, you can see oh, shit. that right there. Uh, that's just part of it. It's the whole tank's pretty, pretty dinged up. So Eric jacked it up to see if he could remedy the sagging suspension. The next morning we had a hearty breakfast and got on the trail early. Despite the blistering heat and long hours of the previous day, the whole crew was in high spirits. What were you saying was the best part of camping on the trail? Oh, you get uh, spend all day in four low and then you camp and then you wake up in the morning and you're already in four low for more <laughs> off-roading. It's like the most amazing feeling that you don't really get a lot of. And there won't be any RVs. No. No, Has no generator. No hashtag van life. Hashtag van life. The first half of the track was dusty, rocky, and arid. The second half of the track was much more green and lush with thick brush lining the trail. Eventually we crested one last rise out of the greenery and back into the hot sun. Well, at least a lot of the road here kind of kicks us up. So we're kind of tipping towards the, the edge. Like right now, I'm gonna to have to ride a pile of rocks uh, instead of go up on the mound. That would tip us over into this probably seemingly endless drop. Yeah, this uh, McGrew, man, I feel like people undersold it. We continued along the trail for perhaps another 45 minutes before the GPS indicated we'd hit the end. Without any ceremony, the McGrew Trail had ended. Yeah, this is a pretty good trail. This is a really good trail. I mean, I'd come back and do it again. 10 out of 10 would do again. 10 out of 10. Would recommend. All right, we have finished McGrew Trail. It only took us uh, 29 hours and 35 minutes. Uh, we were only stopped for 25 hours of that time, though, so <laughs> moving time just shy of uh, four hours. So maybe you can do McGrew in six if you don't have an old XJ taking up the back of the, the group and you don't stop to shoot a video along the way. Heading west, we decided to cut our way out to the coast, out to the ocean. On the way out though, Eric, Rowan, and Gus bailed out and headed home. So by the time we hit the Pacific, it was just Robert, Zane, and me. After my dog Arlo took a quick swim, we rejoined Highway 101 and headed back north. McGrew was a lot different than I expected, in both good and bad ways. I thought it'd be easier, at least for my friends. I also thought it would take us a bit longer than a day and a quarter to run. Although the trip was short, it was a challenging and rewarding one. We had a lot of laughs and a couple knuckle-biting moments along the way. I hope you get the chance to check out McGrew for yourself. Bring some buddies, take your time, but have a good plan for if someone gets stuck. Uh, question I mean, meant to ask like a month ago. Is there a plan if a car gets like actively disabled out here? Yeah, we're just gonna shoot the owner and set the car on fire and just keep rolling. I mean, that honestly sounds like the only idea. 